Every time I listen to Chris Potter, he amazes me with his rhythmic concept of his playing. Chris Potter might say that there is no concept except to get the music to sound great and swing. And I could totally agree with this, but there are so many things to check out. I would look into a few of the rhythmic patterns Chris Potter is using to get his music to sound that amazing. How you can practice this and get this into your own playing. Dinner is served. Your dinner. This lick contains but a few of the rhythmic ideas Chris Potter is working with in his playing. The most important thing is how Chris Potter adds these amazingly rhythmical ideas and get this so tight into his playing. So let's analyze this and we get... On the first E minor 7 bar I play an E minor 7 arpeggio, look at that. Then I play a G major, the upper structure of the E minor 9, adding a 16 note triplet rhythm. I go up a bit of scale. On the A7 altered bar, I play the B flat minor 7 chord down, using a 16 note rhythm. The B flat minor 7 is a tritone substituted dominant to the D major. Check other videos for this, look in the description. In the middle of the A7 bar, I play a plain a, try it. The last four 16 notes of the A7 bar is an F minor 7 chord played down. This is an upper structure of the tritone dominant, the B flat minor 7. That's a little bit far fetched, but it's there. On the D major 7 bar, I go down a D major 7 chord, you see. Use the same 16 note rhythm as in the A7 bar. And again, the same rhythm used at the end of the D major 7 bar on an F sharp minor try. The upper structure of the D major, and if you look at that E, there's a 9 there too. In this lick, there are pretty advanced rhythms and a tons of extra chord notes and stuff. Since the concept of rhythm might actually be enough, I would like to present to you a much more lighter version of a 2-5-1 leg. This makes it easier to go into the practice and getting this into your play, further adding this to songs you play. Here's an example on a more simple chord note approach, still applying all the great rhythms to all the arpeggios. <laughs> In this lick, I mostly work with the diatonic notes of the 2-5-1 in D major. And in bar 1, I use the same rhythms as in the previous lick. Going up twice on the E minor chord, but adding a chromatic approach note in front of it. Towards the A7 bar, I add the D sharp. The D sharp is a chromatic approach note to the E on the A7. I flesh out the A7 chord in the third inversion, going down, playing this 8 note, 16 note triplet rhythm. Then I'm playing the E minor down in the same rhythm, and again playing a little A7 with a chromatic approach note to the C sharp, the C, but changing the rhythm to only 16 notes. Then I run down the C sharp half diminished chord as an upper structure of the A9. On the D major 7 chord, I run down the B minor 7 chord and this gives me the 13 on the D major. And then I'm ending beautifully on the C sharp, the seventh of the D major chord. The same rhythmic ideas apply as in the lick before. Play the arpeggios, but change the pace wherein you play. Not the tempo, but the pace. On my Patreon, you can get these licks and a lot more licks added. Of course, written out in all 12 keys for you to easily apply to your play. Check the first tier on my Patreon. The link is in the description. <laughs> The essence is changing the feel. Getting these lines into your playing is a question about having the technique to play these 60 note and these triplets and changing, which is of course very important. But more importantly is actually to be able to hear the different rhythm, hear the change in time from the 8 note feel to the 16 note feel. We'll get into this right now. <laughs> The rhythm in the first line, so one and a half bars, is an eight note feel. Then suddenly I go into this 16 note feel. I end the last part of the bar in bar three on that eight note feel again. In the second two five one, it's almost 16 note feel the whole way. The first bar, eight notes. Then a lot of 16 note, it doesn't change that much, it's just like 16 note block in the second bar. And in the last bar, 8 note feel again. In this lick, there's a 
clear change from the first bar to the second bar. What really works to me in my practice is adding these different rhythms to the arpeggios in the scale I practice. <laughs> Here I take the first rhythmic pattern of the lick and just add this to the scale. Going up in an eighth note feel with triplets. I have added the ninth chord as you see to get this working with the timing in 4-4. Four, four. The second pattern is the 16 note triplet pattern going up the scale. I choose to bind the eighth note as a lift to the next pattern. This sounds nice, I think. It gives a nice bounce to the rhythm. The 16 note run down the scale. You can easily see that as an eighth note run down the scale, but the feel that you're going into double time is important. This is why there's an extra 8 note feel in between. So you get the mix between the 16 notes and this 8 note and then more 16 notes. It's very much a matter of practicing these chords to really get them into your fingers and getting the freedom to execute them. But maybe more importantly, adding the musical context. A very nice trick I use in my own practice is adding different rhythms in my scale practice in the arpeggio. And this makes a more musical scale practice. You can see I've taken some of the rhythm from the licks and adding this to this scale exercise. You can of course add more or less difficult rhythms if you like, like this one. Mixing these rhythmical concepts in your scale practice actually get you more closer to the musical execution when you play your licks and when you actually improvise. A great way to get this into your playing is adding this immediately as soon as you can to your playing on standards. Here's an example over the great tune Take the A-Train. <laughs> example I mainly use ascending chords. On the first tier on my Patreon I have added much more material on how you can add this into your music. Many more licks and many more scale exercises. Thank you Chris Potter for the inspiration and you can get all this material on the first tier on my Patreon. Everything is of course written out in all 12 keys. What player in your opinion has the best rhythmical approach? Who is your favorite player with the best timing? Let me know in the comments below. You can always support me by joining me on Patreon and then you get all this beautiful extra material I made. Your support makes me able to add these videos to YouTube every week and add the extra material on my Patreon. Thank you very much. Any questions about this subject or other subjects on saxophone, please add it in the comments below. The links and much more interesting material is added in the description below. So check out the description to get all the good stuff. Like and subscribe, you know where to find it and play music and have fun.